It's Bullseye. I'm Jesse Thorne. When you watch Jane Lynch, you pretty much always know you're in for something really funny. You might know her from Glee, from movies like The 40-Year-Old Virgin. But when she's in a Christopher Guest movie, she really stands out. She's played a lifelong pedigreed fancy dog trainer in Best in Show, the judge of a mascot competition in Guest's most recent mascots. And did you know that she can sing, too? For years now, Jane has sung original swing tunes and standards all over the country with a full band in the whole nine yards. When we talked last year, Jane and her band had just recorded their first ever Christmas album. It's called A Swingin' Little Christmas. It's out now. Let's take a listen to the title track. Swingin' little party with all of our friends We're hoping you dig the invitation, make a plan to attend We're gonna be singing jingle bells until the holidays end A swingin' little Christmas time We're gonna be wrapping up your present with a big shiny bow You won't wanna miss a single minute, don't be late for the show There's gonna be gingerbread and tigers and the band's gonna blow Jane Lynch, welcome to the Bullseye Holiday Special. Thank it's great you. to see you. Oh, it's so great to see you, too. Thanks. You're really singing your butt off on this record. Yeah, and I, as I'm listening to it, going, where did we breathe? Because we're performing that live now, going like this. <laughs> I like that you took your celebrity from Glee. Yeah. And I think the last time we spoke, the celebrity from Glee had just, was just, just blossoming. Great. Yes, indeed. It had just, it just pierced through the uh, ground. You had just gone from like 20 years as a working actor mm -hmm. to Angry. famous person uh, completely exact by surprise. Bitter. Yes, exactly. And I'm glad I, I'm glad that you took your uh, your fame and financial security and decided to launch a cabaret act. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> like, yeah. It's clear that the whole time you were just like, if I can just get on stage and sing. Yeah, that's exactly the reason for the whole trajectory. Now I will do a cabaret <laughs> show. <laughs> Was it uh, was it precipitated by all, all the volume of singing that uh, was going on on Glee or from being on Broadway? That was like one of the yeah, first probably, things you did. It was probably the Broadway thing. I mean, and the Glee thing, too, um, probably started it. But I, I've always loved singing. I've done um, been in sketch comedy shows since, you know, my my late 20s. And we always do a silly little musical number. And we were usually quite musically good, but it was funny. And then, of course, Annie as well, doing Annie on Broadway. I don't always enjoy watching uh, musical theater mm -hmm. particularly. I have to admit. One of those. Okay. Whatever. I'm not against it. I, I'm not against it. Good. I just don't. It, it, has to, it has to really work for it to work for me as an audience member. I get you, yeah. But mm -hmm. if you said to me right now, Here's a part in a musical. I'd be like, yeah, <laughs> All over it. I can't sing, I can't dance, <laughs> but it is fun. It's so much fun. It, the doing Annie was like I got bitten by the theater bug again. I hadn't been on stage in a very, very long time. And uh, I, I was up there with all these people, and we all loved each other, and we all had little, you know, inside jokes, and we'd look at each other, and ha, ha, ha. And we all hated the children. And <laughs> it was really fun. We didn't hate the children. They were great kids. Um, that's kind of led directly to uh, 54 Below, which is a cabaret space in New York, asking me if I wanted <clears throat> four nights to do my act, which I didn't have. Most Broadway people have an act. So I grabbed Kate Flannery, who was Meredith the Drunk in the office, and said, let's do a show. And it led to this thing, that record you just played. Kate Flannery does have an act. Kate Flannery yes, is a, great, a mm -hmm. great singer, sings with a comedy Amazing group singer. called The Lampshades. Mm -hmm. When you agreed to have a cabaret act, was it a daunting prospect? <sighs> Yeah, it was like, what What am I doing? I don't know how to do this. And um, I knew, but it was something I wanted to do. There was something stronger inside of me screaming yes than the, than the pretty loud voice saying no. So I said yes. And of course, I, I called Kate right away. We've been singing on and off together for a long time. And um, uh, so we, we knew, you know, she's a legit singer. She's a legit yeah, she's she a throwback, really blow, yeah. yeah, and she's a throwback. She can sing like the you know the '40s, '50s, and early '60s, which this Christmas album is basically a retro album of that period, and it's one of my favorite too. So, so I brought Kate along, and she, and then I hear people like cracking up as I'm singing this song, and I look back, and she is the shenanigans, <laughs> just and so thus was born kind of 
kind of a, a, a heighten and explore of what was already our dynamic, which is kind of an Eve Arden, Kay Ballard kind of thing, where Eve Arden is the tall, like, disapproving one, and Kay Ballard's the loud, you know, wacky Italian, even though Kate is Irish. I mean, one of the things about singing on stage, and singing in general, mm -hmm. is that it requires shamelessness in a way that even comedy doesn't necessarily like you have to yes i see what you mean it's you can't raw. sing on stage without putting all of yourself into it there's no holding back and when if you're you singing. are you they can tell yeah anybody can tell you can feel it um yeah you know i remember that i saw a picture of myself and i was holding the mic and my eyes were closed and i was my head was back and i was like wow you really think you're a singer it's really exposing it's almost like dancing in a way too it's almost like you take all of your clothes off and you say, check this out. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a nude kind of a thing. Do you like Christmas music? I do, yeah. I haven't for a while, though. I will be perfectly honest. Um, you, like, took a break from liking it? Yeah, but as an adult. I used to love it as a kid. I had this thing about wanting to get the Christmas spirit when I was a kid, and I used to dim the lights and turn on the Christmas tree and turn on the music and sit there and wait for it to come, and then, you know, it wouldn't come. And so I kind of got turned off by it, and I think Christmas is, goes on far too long, says the woman who started pushing her album November 1st. <laughs> I, I'm, still, I'm still impressed by this Christmas seance that you're holding. <laughs> like it sounds like you're like a, you're like Lenny Kravitz's producer and you're like trying yes, to get right. the studio ready for Lenny. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Turn on the lights. <laughs> I know. Let's burn some incense. I was trying to get the Christmas spirit. put some scarves on the lamps. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. What did you think Christmas was supposed to be that you weren't getting as a kid? This magical thing where you're filled with joy. It's what we chase when we have a beer, <laughs> when we smoke a joint. Um, when I get my coffee in the morning, we're chasing that thing, you know, that place of bliss. You you grew up in the Midwest, right? I do. Yeah, Chicago. So it was it was like a snow. Snowy, like Chicago yeah. is sort of a Christmas place. To it me. is. It, no one does Christmas like Chicago. I've been saying that in all the interviews lately. It but might it's just true. be. It might just be because I watch Home Alone a lot as a kid <laughs> that I believe that. It is. But... It's a beautiful. It, the city really does it up. And I'm from the suburbs, and we did it up too. What did you? Uh, think Christmas could be like what was the thing that you imagined that you were trying to achieve? Oh, it's it's the whole that's the thing when the Grinch's heart gets bigger, 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 and then almost explodes, or does it explode? I'm trying to remember, and it's what happens to um, Ebenezer Scrooge. Merry Christmas! You know, it's that thing where your heart just fills with joy, and there's nothing worse than December 26th when all the lights are still up. It didn't happen. The joy didn't happen. And as an adult, I just didn't even bother putting this stuff up. I was like, oh, this is crazy. So this is kind of my reentry as a sane adult individual into the beauty of this music and the beauty of what this season, which we should have, you know, 24-7. You know, once you get past the your hate of religion, um, there, there's just beautiful sentiment, you know. That I don't think that's go, a universal condition. <laughs> I guess but... not. <laughs> I don't, and in fact, I don't have a hate that was just for comedy purposes. Just um, don't, I don't buy into it. <laughs> well, let's hear some more music from Jane Lynch's new Christmas album. Uh, uh, let's hear Jingle Bells. I mean, that's a classic. <laughs> Did spending your summer with Christmas mm -hmm. change your feelings about Christmas this year? No, it didn't. It, it well, I guess we let, we, let's say how it did. Um, uh, it is something that um, can happen all year long because I got into the Christmas quote unquote spirit in over the summer doing this, and mainly because I love music so much. So, is it Christmas spirit or is it music spirit? I don't know. But I was a very nice person while we were doing this. I was very happy and couldn't wait to get to the studio. And enjoyed the entire process. And then listening to this album, like the first time I got to hear it, after it went through all the processes of being mastered and and balanced or whatever those people do, um, I was so proud of it. I'm And pride isn't even the word because I don't even really kind of feel like I did anything. I feel like we all just had a beautiful intention and some skill. And, you know, the muse took over, truly. You know, you were, you were on the show... Years and years ago, um, like I don't something like six years ago or something like that, 
And um, right. at the time, uh, you had just become both a famous person and a famous <laughs> gay person. <laughs> we talked about your coming out, which involved basically people noticing that you had never been in the closet, yeah, right. <laughs> essentially. Yeah. And um, I, I've just been curious, like, how do you feel about this f five years of being a f famous gay person with yeah. capital letters at the beginning of each word? <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's interesting because I feel like your celebrity, in a way, was part of a real turning point in the way that public culture I agree yeah addresses uh, homosexual LGBTQ issues generally mm -hmm. it, you are one of the first people to become a legit famous person who wasn't required to have the press conference yeah exactly <laughs> yeah like you know Ellen really took one for the team yeah you know she um, it became a big deal America loved her and then found out she was gay and and so she it was she was obliged to I don't know if she want I know she didn't I mean I don't know this for a fact but I can't imagine she would have wanted to have that Ellen episode where I'm coming out um the the TV show and then that went away and she's now like became the face of American Express and has one of the the most popular daytime talk show perhaps the most popular I would imagine she is like a dynasty people friggin love her and she makes she's making bed sheets now and people are eating they them love up her as long as she does that dance at the beginning the, of the, yeah, show. the dance in the beginning <laughs> I know a couple of people that worked on the show <laughs> when she stopped doing that dance for like four days yeah and it was it was cataclysmic <laughs> I bet I'll bet <laughs> and I think she probably got tired of it and wanted to move on yeah, and but America wouldn't let her being, yeah and I love watching, you know, I'll drive by uh, Warner Brothers sometimes and you see the audience in line and it's all Midwestern ladies who have flown out here to be in the audience of that show, excited as hell to dance with Ellen. And they're probably all maybe 10 years ago would have been like, ooh, lesbians. Right. No, not at all anymore. They love her. So I was the beneficiary for sure because I don't I don't know that I would have had the um, – the courage. I had a lot of shame about my sexuality when I was younger. And if I thought that I was going to have to like say, yeah, I'm an actress, but I'm gay. Oh, I, I would, that would have scared the hell out of me. So, you know, this, this path was kind of paved. Um, people like Rosie and they came through with a machete and I just walked, walked through the, the, the jungle unmolested. <laughs> Did, um, how much younger are we talking about? Did you have a lot of shame? I guess I'm wondering like, um, I guess I'm wondering if partly like the surprise that happened when you became uh, like a public person rather than just a working entertainer, mm -hmm. um, it was like, well, I got to be the person I am because there's not another choice now. Yeah. Yeah. That was kind of it. And also I, I felt safe. I felt safe in my own self about it. And I felt, you know, safe in the world. So I wasn't um, I wasn't concerned about hiding anything. Or, 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 you know, standing up and, you know, having a press conference that probably nobody would attend. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about Christmas. Do you have fond Christmas memories or are all your Christmas memories about failing to achieve the <laughs> state of, of Christmas? That... There are a lot of them about failing to achieve. Let's see. As I got older, um, you know, and I, when I was living as an adult in Chicago and I would have to go back to... It just wasn't anything. It was a non-event. You know, I'd have to go back to the suburbs to have. And it was. And I, I certainly didn't decorate my house or anything like that. I still don't. Um, I leave that to my sister who, like, creates a Christmas village <laughs> in her home. Um, so, yeah, I don't I don't have that. But I, I must say I enjoy it, but just for those four or five days. And then, like I said, December 26th, it, I'm, I'm home and it's over and it's behind me. And I don't want to hear the music, and this is terrible, a person who just released a Christmas album. I don't want to hear it for more than like a week. Right. Um, but maybe now it'll be different that I love this album so much. What was the composition of your family when you were a kid? Were your folks together? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was your extended family around? Like, yeah. was oh, Christmas yeah. a time when everybody was there? Yes, I'll give you some great memories. When I was in high school, um, I have an older sister, a younger brother, and we were all in high school at the same time. Uh, and um, my parents loved to sing. 
My dad was a harmonizer, and my mom would do the melody, and we loved Christmas carols. And we used to have, for about four years there, we had a, an open house Christmas Eve party where all of my friends, my sister's friends, and my brother's, my brother and like two friends, he was a bit of a stoner, um, <laughs> would come and um, to the house. And my parents, all of my parents' friends, and um, Andrea Klimak would play the piano. And we had a piano at our house, and we would sing carols, and we would drink, and oh, it was so much fun, my my uh, my father's family would come my mother's family would come and it would be just a huge open house those thing those nights were a blast are you prepared to uh get in the holiday spirit like every year from here on out are we going to have an Amy Mann, Brian Setzer style <laughs> touring holiday show. Uh, yes, we are. We actually are. We have some shows booked for next year. We did three nights at the Nico where we performed the album, and um, uh, just this past weekend in San Francisco, and it was so fun. And now we're booked for San, uh, uh, Portland and Seattle for next next Christmas. Are you going to wear Christmas outfits? We kind of do. We kind of wear red and black. Yeah, we kind of do it. Kind of do it up. You can imagine Kate. You know, she's got this like taffeta, <laughs> bright red taffeta uh, dress from, you know, like the 1950, 50, late 50s. And she looks great. And Tim wears his black tuxedo with bright red tie. And I just look like a lesbian in red. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't found my style yet. They're so great with their style. I, I try. It's like, how, how do I how do I wear a suit and look? Retro. I guess I could look retro like a guy. So maybe I wear a skinny little tie. Well, there is one thing about the aesthetics of Christmas mm-hmm. that always makes me uncomfortable, which is that if you are living in this elegiac, reverent of the past world, mm-hmm. whether it's about 1955 or about Victorian times. Right. I'd say those are probably the top two categories of. Yeah, I would say so too. Invented Christmas memories. Yes. Yeah. Oh, is that right? Oh, the Victorian. Oh, I right. thought you were know, like Victorian yeah, Christmas or like, like the, uh, Ebenezer or like Scrooges Ozzie and Harry at Christmas. Okay. Right. Yes, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Those are things where you are imagining them as a simpler and purer time. Right. But they're also. Uh, darker and more hateful time. I mean, there wasn't a lot of... Uh, but black and white was simpler back then. Too. Lesbian. Oh, yeah, right. Lesbian, lesbian oh, fashion considerations there's, there's in 1954. There's no place for me to go back to derive. Now, I don't always dress like a lesbian, but I, I won't wear a dress. So that, if I'm going to do the whole uh, retro thing, I have to wear a dress, but I'm not going to. So do I want to do it like in a uh, drag, like it look like... Tim. I think you would look. I think you would look great in uh, in a tailored tuxedo, not Maybe. a men, not a men's tuxedo, yeah. but uh, you know, the, you can alter a tuxedo for a woman's. Oh body. yeah, oh they make them. They make, yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah, yeah. I, I'll go that route next. I time. think you look fantastic. Well, thank you. I mean, the other option. Hmm. I'm just gonna throw it out there. Yeah, Santa suit. I, I knew you were going there. As long as it's not in the primary uh, red, I don't like that color. I like it to have a little Cabernet in it or a little mm-hmm. Merlot. Or just whatever plus reindeer horns. <laughs> exactly. That light, please. Kind of go on and off with the lights. That'd be nice. Well, Jane Lynch, thank you so much for thank My you so pleasure. much for taking the time and coming on the show. I just uh, so love your work, and it's such a lovely album. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Let's go out on some more music from Jane Lynch's new Christmas album. Let's hear Winter's Never Cold When You're Around. There you go. The air is cold, it's ten below. The driveway's buried under snow. But winter's never cold when you're around. Jane Lynch. Give her Christmas album a listen. If you haven't, it's a lot of fun. It's called A Swingin' Little Christmas. You can find it pretty much anywhere you buy music. <laughs> 